Hi, this is Multi Topic Talk. Welcome to this new video where I will be ranking all 28 missions of Advance Wars Dual Strike Art Campaign. So basically, uh, it's from worst to best, in my own opinion. So uh, yeah, let's start with the last place. And I will also give the reason why. So basically, in last place we got Mission 25 being Ring of Fire. I did not enjoy it at all. That's why it's, it's in their last place. Now, I do not like clones, but looks like they wanted to bring back the clones. That's a bad idea. And not just that, there's a volcano and we are near the end of the game. And that mission is very easy as long as you win the upper screen. So it's not challenging, it's just long. And it's not a great mission. And we got so many more missions that are much better than this one. So with that being said, going in 27th place, we got Pincer Strike being mission 24 now the main reason why i really hate this map is drake why they needed to clone drake they wanted you to being pissed off and sold your game that's probably what they they wanted you to do so basically the best way to win this map is to have sacha as one of your seal and you would like her to be blue moon because if you do not have Sasha, all your troops will be badly hurt by tsunami spamming, typhoon spamming, tag power, you don't want that on your way. So basically you're forced into playing Sasha. And that's Fog of War. And that's just an annoying map, it's not fun. Like once you got rid of all of his huge troops, the mission is easy. And all you need to do is go for the capture HQ and that's it. That's why it's very low. There are plenty of more missions that are more fun to play. Now, going in 26th place, another annoying clone mission, Dark Ambition Mission 23. So that's the mission where you face off Olaf clone. Why am there's snow, so you go low on fuel, and there's Olaf. Olaf has been cloned. Why? Okay, now, with that being said, that mission is not as awful as the both previous one I was speaking about. However, it's low. It's not fun. If you don't control your opponent tag, you're pretty much... Uh, destroyed so you need Sasha you need Sasha again because without Sasha he would spam his tag I think he have enough units to have two or three tags and you know Olaf is good yet yeah, like you give him the worst seal and he can do a great team especially in this game so now Coming in 25th place, we got mission 26, Surrounded. Another very annoying mission. We get another clone, and why they chose Andy? Tell me, we already had a Andy clone in the first game. So why did you give us another Andy clone? Please give us something else. I don't know, Nell, Achi. Achi would be actually really annoying. But anyway, clones mission, they are bad. And not just that, it's so easy to lose on this one because the enemy has a huge army, he has access to silo and you're forced into having Sasha again because without Sasha you're done turn 3, Blue Moon has lost and you no more have hopes to capture everything. And Kindle is also very annoying as you know it. So, yeah, another clone mission very low in this list. Now, we go 
to the mission number 18, omens and sign for the 24th place. So basically, omens and sign is very low because I do not like to watch the CPU controlling the upper screen. Tell me how is it interesting gameplay wise. Yes, it's challenging because that CPU, that artificial intelligence is bad. He is dumb. So yes, it's challenging, but it's not fun looking to CPU fighting each other. If I would have wanted to see this, I would go on Versus and I would place two artificial intelligence. Anyway, with that being said, that mission itself had good ideas. You destroy a fortress, but the upper screen, man, the upper screen. If I could use the upper screen and play the upper screen, I'm pretty sure that mission would be higher in my list because it's not that awful. None of the two opponent CO are really annoying. It's just the fact that you watch a CPU getting destroyed, you give him support, but he's too stupid to do something with it. So yeah, and, and in this mission we get both the stealth and the uh, carrier in, in the game and that was interesting. So now, let's go to place 23 with victory or death. Victory of death, it's the same reason as I'm in Insign, why it's that low. It's the fact that you need to watch two CPU smashing each other and in the upper screen the guy is also dumb so tell me who had that brilliant idea to let the artificial intelligence playing in the upper screen tell me explain to me i want to understand better that map design choice because the map itself i have nothing against it cole is a fun opponent he's adder but weak he has, yes, his strength Adder don't have, but his seal power takes 3 stars, which is a lot of stars for, for what it does. So yeah, um, now going in 22nd place, we got Long March. Now, that one could have been a good idea. However... It's the same issue as most of the map where you're facing two seals. You need Sasha. Because when he uses his tag, you're crushed. I'm telling you, you will get crushed. So because I'm forced on using Sasha, I, I don't enjoy that much that mission. And not just that, I thought I did great, but I did... 299 points in this mission so I need to do it again on my let's play 300 points each missing 300 points but anyway with that being said it's annoying that this mission is so hard and you cannot have a good score that easy like winning this mission is a challenge in itself so yeah, now um, let's go to position 21st, mission 19, Into the Woods, now. Lash and Kindle, okay, they make a team, I, I need to admit it, but here again you need Sasha. And not just that, Woods, why Fog of War and that many Woods? And they hide Yuzium in those woods. That map is a nightmare to do. The enemy has such a large army and you had so a low or low army. It's a small army what you got. So you need Sasha and you need at least vision, so probably Sanja. There are two characters you need to choose, and when you're forced into picking character and not a fan of the map. Because here again, if you do not choose Sasha, they will spam the tag because they have a huge army. And there's also something else that bothers me with this mission. 
is the airport. Who had that idea? Tell me, if you lose your anti-air, or if you don't stop the capture of the airport, you're done. You will build bombers, 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 and then a black bomb, and then you're you're done. And with those woods and those museums, that map is challenging, but it's frustrating when you bump into a museum and then in the wood, you're like, oh, I just lost my mega tank. So that map is not that challenging if you play safe. But if you play too safe, it's becoming unplayable because they will have the airport. Anyway. With that being said, that mission is low and I think it's at the right place. There are worse missions like the other I mentioned before. But this mission I'm not looking into doing it again. I will do it again because of my series but otherwise forget it, I hate this mission. Now, going in 20th place, mission 22, Crystal Calamity. Now, the main reason why I hate this mission is the high difficulty to get power ranking here. If only they would explain exactly how to get power score there, it would not be that bad. But the other challenge, you need Sasha again. You're forced to have Sasha. Because otherwise they win on turn 2 because of their tag. Or turn 3 if you're lucky. With Sasha, if you don't take over the silo on green earth territory, then you're, you lose by turn 3 or 4 even with Sasha. So you need to use all, all those silos. And not just that, they have a stealth. Are you kidding me? Why are they are given a stealth? That's one of the most OP vehicles in the game. Give us a fighter, give us a, another stealth. That would be more fair, but having that stealth coming at you, it's unfair. And then it can go to the airport and repair if you don't break it. It's a bad joke. And there's also a museum, if I remember correctly. No, that map is just pure nightmare. It's evil. And they also give you a time limit. That's weird. Anyway. Now I enough complaint about that mission I did not enjoy. Let's go to 19th place. Now it's Snow Hunters. The idea is good. The strength 3 mini cannon I like it. However the opponent man. The opponent. Why arc? Tell me. Why arc? And not just that. The hidden city. Are you kidding me? They placed it in the worst spot ever. Like you're forced to have a strategy or a tactic based on capturing that city early on. Otherwise you won't be able to do it later on. And if you're too slow you're overpowered because the enemy has a too huge army. You need to finish the mission quick. But if you do it too quick you won't be able to capture the city and have the hidden map. Now, the next time I will be playing that mission, it will be easier because I won't bother capturing that city in the island. I will just go for the win and it's much easier that way. Anyway, I hope uh, you guys will still enjoy the video. It's already out. But yeah, now going in 18th place, we get mission 13, Frozen Fortress. I did not like it at all because they start with three come tower and that's busted. Tell me who had that idea to give them three come tower. It's like the worst idea ever. They are already strong because it's 2v1. They already have a good army and Blue Moon is basically on the defensive for most of the game. They are just there to survive and if they if you let them die first of all you will lose and second they will have too much strength to beat you up so that map was interesting overall but it was not made fair and there's snow like why snow it's like the most annoying thing you need APC in a map you don't need APC 
anyway. With that being said, that map deserves the place it got. Going in 17th place means to an end last mission, mission 28. No, that mission was awful. I need to tell you this. You have a upper screen, you cannot control it. The CPU is playing badly in the upper screen. I, I'm like, why guys? It's the last mission of the game. You want your player to remember, yeah, the last mission of that campaign was bad. It was boring. You needed to look at the upper screen to see your teammate getting slapped around and doing stupid plays. Yeah, that's what he does. And that's what they want you. They want you to remember, yeah, the last mission of this game is bad. Like, you go at Black Hole Rising, the last mission was fun, I guess. More fun than what we got with this one. This one is just a 1v1. And what could have been good is a 3-on-1 with a different map design. And a 3-on-1 basically with both screens. That could be great. But anyway, I, I'm not the game creator, I cannot create the game, but they missed the mark on the last mission, on the last moment you should remember about this game. Like, the, the last few missions, beside mission 27, the last few missions were bad. Like, they had a bad idea, like, it's challenging and it's annoying and it's boring at the same time, it's the three of those adjectives. Now, going to the next one, we got Alien Touch Mission 21 at the 16th place. Why it's not that great? First of all, they have 6 com tower. That's ridiculous. So even their 3 HP unit can uh, make you trouble. And that's disgusting. Playing this map is, is disgusting. You need Sasha again, as most of the map, where you have multiple seal. And it's not that challenging, because the thing is, if you play right, you destroy all those crystals very fast. If you play right. But if you play wrong, you lose or the map takes forever to be done. So, the idea was good, but poorly executed in my opinion. That could have been a better mission. Now, going in 15th place, we got mission 10, Black Bolt Aoi. Now, I don't have much aid for this mission. However, I don't remember anything great out of it. It's just that mission there to fill a spot on the game, and that's why it's there. And the mission, the uh, hidden city, it's not that bad to capture, so it's something we can do. It's fun, like I enjoy Black Bolt Ahoy, but Black Bolt Ahoy is pretty easy. Like, you go for the capture, or even the route, both way are easy for this map. That's why it's low. That's it. That's an easy map just there to be there. Now, going in 14th place, we get mission 5, Never Ending War. So, Never Ending War, it's low because it's a hard map, but not just that. It's not a very fun map. It's just a long map. And that's what makes it hard because the enemy has a large army. So you're forced into making uh, anti, uh, indirect units. And why it's that low, it's also the fact that we only have access to a few units from the base. And I don't understand why, and it's dumb, I don't like it. I'm forced into using an, uh, artillery against Nia Tank, it's, it's a bad idea. If the enemy captures the base by uh, the mini cannon, they win. If they capture the airport, they win. There's so many ways the enemy can win this one. And it's not it's not that great because you don't need tactics. You just need to make sure they don't capture anything to produce units. And if you try to capture the base on top part, usually 
you will lose a lot of units just to take it and then it will it will just over like overwhelm you there so you, you will just lose your unit for nothing it's just too strong that's the thing that's why that mission is low but hey there are worse missions than this now 13th mi 13th place we get mission 15 with verdant eels look i have a love a love and hate relationship with this one i will tell you why it's both love and hate i hate it because javier is op it's just getting ridiculous he only needs to come tower and he's busted like you cannot do anything and if you don't play Sasha guess what they will tag you and you won't do anything they will crush you now the other thing I don't like is the fact that you're forced into capturing their HQ because you cannot in the time limit you cannot route them it's just too hard and you don't have the money or the troops to do so now what i love is that feeling like it's a dark mirror version dual strike so basically you have indirect as blue moon and that's very interesting i liked playing blue moon there like i use grit usually with this mission and i have a lot of fun or sometimes i use grim but anyway i have a lot of fun as blue moon and Orange Star, you can do some good stuff there with Achi or Colin. You can still have a good army there. But the overall mission is fun, but poorly executed. They chose the wrong seal to place there as enemy. Now, going in 12th place, it's mission 4, Reclaim the Skies. That mission is too easy and too short, that's why it's there. Like, it's a fun mission, but it's slow because it's too short. I have nothing else more to say. And if you have seen my video, it's like 5 minutes. I think it's even under 5 minutes. It's too short in my opinion for a tactical game like Advance Wars. Now, going in 11th place, we get mission 7, Fog Rolls In. So why it's that, oh, actually it's not that low, it's almost top 10, but they didn't make it. Top 10 is for me pure gold and pure fun. So yeah, now 11th place, uh, Fog Rosen. Basically what I don't like is the fact that if you don't waste time to go capture the HQ, it's very very easy because the enemy will leave his HQ open for capture and not just that fog of war itself it's not that great and I think it's the only mission where I really found the enemy cheating in fog of war I know in Zol strike usually they don't cheat in fog of war but in this specific mission they do cheat I'm pretty sure in my video they did cheat once or twice. I need to relook re into it. I think they did cheat. So they know where you are even because even when there is fog of war. And the other thing, Cole is so annoying. He is just annoying. Like really he is spamming his seal power like it, it was other. <laughs> but he's not other. That's the thing. So, now, going in 10th place, we got mission 12, Lightning Strikes. So what I liked, we play two screen. Yes, we can, we just need to go in the menu. And not just that, it was the interesting introduction to Grim and Sensei to the game. They are fun to face off, they are not OP, and if you play smart, you will be good. And it will be interesting, it will be fun. It's a fun mission, I remember it, and I remember having great time doing it. I don't, I, when, when I go back, if I look again to my playthrough to improve my videos, like, I'm pretty sure I will enjoy looking at this mission again, because it's a fun mission. Now, 
going in ninth place, we get mission six, the ocean blue. Now the reason why it's ninth and not uh, higher in the top ten, it's mainly because it's annoying getting 300 points. It's very hard and you need to really play smart and you're forced into using Kambai or another busted seal. But it's still a fun map because it made it to the top 10. It's interesting we have both the air unit and the naval unit for the first time on the game if I'm right. Oh no, we do have an airport in Everending War. But in this... Like if you play in normal mode, you have for the first time naval and air unit. I think. But it's, it's still very fun. The idea itself is good. Uh, the enemy has a large army, but if you use bait, he will be fine. Then, coming in 8th place, we got Mission 8, Tag Battle. So basically, I won't go too long with this one. It's a fun mission, I don't have any bad memory about it. Play Sasha, you will be fine, it will be fun, you will have a good time, you need the airport, you need to stop him from capturing the base, you will have fun. And the map design is interesting, the Piper Runner, the new unit being there is also interesting, I liked it. Now, going in 7th place we got Mission 3, Max Attacks. There we get the Black Bomb for the first time, it's interesting. Uh, you need to blow up mini cannon to have like XP and it's fun, it's great, it's interesting. Uh, you can use pretty much any CO you want. If you play right, you'll be able to finish the mission. It's very a fun mission. Mission 3 max attacks, it's a very fun mission. Now, 6th place, mission 1, Jake's Trial. So, now I will be honest here. It's there because once you know how to do it, it's fun. But if you don't know how to do it, you will cry over this mission. It's a crazy hard mission if you don't know how to do it. But if you know how to do it, use Kanbai, that's it. Kanbai is OP. Anyway, that mission, very interesting one. Now, going to the top 5, I need to specify that top 5, like, I can switch over almost any of those except for the first place. Like, for example, my fifth place I will mention here could be fourth or third. And it will be the same. Fort Mason could be fifth or third, and it will be the same because, in my opinion, the top five is, except for the first place, the top five is great time, a lot of fun, and you can replay it anytime and you will enjoy it as much, in my opinion. So, now let's go there. 5th place, mission 20, mock a mock. Now, let's be real, I like a lot this mission, mainly for the XP gain and that interesting fact that you need to save someone, being Ark and Lash as Blue Moon. But if you play the art mode, you choose your seal, and since there's a lot of Fusium, you can basically clear the map from those Fusium and gain crazy XP if you play the arm mode and you have four seal they all get two ranks if you leave them play alone so if you only play two seal you will gain four ranks with those two seal and that's fun like e easy making point mission is needed in this game because you want everyone to be at least level 9 or 10 to enjoy fully the game. So we need mission like this one. Now, the, f the main thing I could complain about it is the difficulty. It's probably the easiest mission on the game. But it's still fun because you need to do money, you know. Now, 4th place, mission 2, the new black. I liked it a lot for its objective that mission was very fun it was very fun let's be real like you need to save that infantry like look 
What else game you need to save a 1 HP infantry? None. Now, the main complaint I could have is Jogger Luck. It's ridiculous. I don't like luck based character. They are not fun to face. Let's be real, sometimes you will take out your Neo tank, which is infantry. Yeah. That's the complaint I have. Now, going in third place, we get Spiral Garden. 17 uh, mission. And then Spiral Garden is that high because of its objective. It's fun. It's a capture game. And... It feels different than most of the rest of the game. The main complaint I could have here would be the opponent's Kindle is annoying. I do not enjoy facing off Kindle. Let's be real here, Kindle is a pain. Outside of that, it's very fun. Anytime, any day, I can play again this map. Now. Going in second place, we got mission 14, Lashes Test. The mission is I because it's fun. I don't have any bad memory about this mission. If you play well, you will be able to finish it quickly and you will be uh, doing a good score and it's a fun map. If you play badly, then you will suffer, but if you play good, you will be good. Now. My first place, my favorite mission of this game is mission 27 for the future. Now, the main reason why I like it so much, the map itself is at the advantage of Von Bolt. If you play badly, it's probably the hardest mission of the game along with Crystal Calamity. If you play it the right way, you should be fine. You will only be able to do one Ex Machina, which is the only real threat in this one. Because if you use Sasha, you will shut him down. And since you have three army, you can do so many teams. You can have so much fun with different seal. That's just a great map overall. And when I think about it, I don't see any negative points there. That's why it's that high in my list. It's a challenging map. Um, yes, you're forced into playing Sasha, but you can use plenty of other seals beside of her. And I think it's fitting for the ending of the game. That mission is the, the citadel of this game. It's the odd pursuit of this game. It's a very fun mission. So I hope you guys enjoyed my ranking. It was over 33 minutes-ish. Uh, next video will be a uh, lot of um, Splinter Cell in January, but not just that. In January, we will do a challenge I made myself. I will do War Room. Uh, I will also be ranking all CEO of this game. I have a lot of video planned for 2021. And let's hope 2021 will have a better year than this year. So what is your top 28 or top 10 or top 5 or worst mission or best mission of the game? I look like someone who did hate the game but I enjoyed it the most. It was a great game. It, the campaign has a lot of flaws, I will be honest there. But it's a great game, it's very fun. So yeah, with this, have a great day.